Hello everybody, Sunday Adelaide here. I'm back today with another topic and today I want to challenge the uh, the status quo and the belief system of most Nigerians. Most Nigerians believe that Nigeria's biggest problem is leadership. I today come to disagree with that. I want to say that Nigeria's biggest problem is not leadership, but it is something else. It is lack of values. So, and I want to prove that to you today. I was fortunate enough to have read a, a poem that was written by somebody. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of the person who wrote it, but somebody sent it to me. I looked through that poem and I agreed with most of what is written there. The only thing is that I had to redo it and rewrite it in a way that reflects my own beliefs. And uh, so, what is the biggest um, problem? of Nigeria if it's not leadership. If the bigger problem is our lack of value. And our biggest problem also is not lack, it's not our structure. Some people say it is structure. We need to restructure Nigeria. And it is it is in structuring Nigeria that we have our problems solved. Let or somebody say, let everybody go their own way. If everybody will go their own way, then you know everybody will live good. What a naive people. How can we be so naive? How can we be so naive? It is naive to think that if we restructure and just redistribute money, money will make us to live good. No, it is values that make us to live good or bad. It is also naive to think that let everybody go their own way. Yorubas will go, Igbos will go, and then everybody will live good. Naive. How can you be so naive? <laughs> Without changing the content of character of individual Igbos and Yorubas and of our citizens, we will never live better. We need to change who we are. And I want to prove to you today that Nigeria's biggest problem is not leadership. It is we ourselves. Uh, and in particular, our value system. The poem that I spoke about that I remade, it says like this, Nigeria is a land of generous without war. Do we have generous in Nigeria? In Nigeria, uh, Nigeria army? Of course we have generous. Where did they fight? Where did they earn the, the, the title? They never fought. Sitting in office, that is a picture of Nigeria for you. And do you think that's just because it's in Nigeria? Do you think if Yorubas go, they will not have the same situation? Same. Do you think if Igbos go, they will not have generals? Same. Even if the Biafra, they had generals there, even though it was not even a country yet when they, they had the war. It's just a country of fouls, false assumption, false entitlement. We are all like that. It's not just the Aousas that are to, that are to blame. It's not just the Igbos that are to blame. It's not just the Yorubas that are to blame. We are all to blame. And it's a problem of value system. Nigeria is a country where, tight, where people have titles without accomplishments. Titles without accomplishments. People, everybody wants to have a title. But what is the accomplishment? Somebody will write as an engineer. Show me your design. If you are an engineer, this is, what have you created? What have you designed? What have you invented? What are the innovations you have as an engineer? There are 15-year-old kids in universities, in Nigeria, in Africa, in other places, who have designs, who have, who have created something, who have innovations, and they are not saying engineer something. You engineer this and that, and you don't have anything to show for it. That's Nigeria for you. So also is with politicians, so also is with pastors, so also is with everybody. You think it's only Yorubas or Igbos that are to blame for that? Or the houses? No way. It's a value system issue. Con Nigeria is a country where prof we are professors without discovery. The professor, big deal. Wow. Big knowledge. Big titles. Oh, if professor, the professor. I've met professors in Nigeria that made me to weep. The stupidity, the foolishness, the emptiness in their head just scared me. I am not a professor or anything like that, but I teach professors. Today I teach professors. But there are some professors that I saw 
And I saw them in churches, by the way. There were church members running around some fraudster pastors being their personal assistants and their professors. Shame. And this is a problem of all our nation. It's a value system problem, guys. It's not a leadership problem. Now, it's Nigeria. It's a country where you have colleges and universities and university graduates without skills. Nigerians don't know how to do anything. Come to Europe, you see that almost every man knows how to repair something, how to fix something. They don't even need to be engineers. They have skills. Somebody has a skill. Everybody has some skills. I mean, we have my, I have some of my assistants here in this house, many of them. They finish universities, they finish medicine, they read medicine, they read different things. But when they come to work with me, I discover they don't have skills. They don't have elementary skills to, to operate, to function. So I tell them, you poor are not educated. Even though you have finished university, you have degree, the only thing they know is that degree, is that uh, course that they read and what they taught them there. They just give exams. And the whole of Nigeria is almost like that. It's a value system issue. It's not a Nigeria issue. It's not a leadership issue. It's a, Niger it's a value system issue. Now, you could say it's, uh, the con leadership is connected to all this. Yes, leadership is connected to all this. But those leaders, before they became those leaders, they had these issues. That's why they became bad leaders. All those people who became our leaders is because they had issues like this. That's why they are poor leaders. That's why they are bad leaders. It's because they had poor and bad values. That is why they ended up becoming poor and bad leaders. So, becoming bad leaders is secondary. What is primary is what they had in them. If they had, had the right values in them, they would have become bad leaders. They would have become the right leaders, good leaders. But we have bad leadership because of the content of character of our people who became leaders with bad values and hence they couldn't perform in the position they are in. Nigeria is a country where you have politicians without ideology. Ask them their ideology. Go to any political party, even the new generation political parties. Ask them about their ideology. They don't understand ideology. It's just political parties about personalities and money banks. That's Nigeria for you. You think that is only in the Igbo area of Nigeria? Or only in the South-South? Or only with Aousas? It's with all of us. Politics without direction. We play politics. That's why we move from one party to another. Some people will run to this party today. They will run to the other party today. Because there is no direction. There is only self-interest people have. Then you have population. Nigeria is a country with population without identity cards. We, have, we are 200 million people. No identity cards, no birth certificate, no street address, no place where you are born, no, <laughs> no identity. 200 million people, you cannot get identification cards or birth certificate for them. And we say we are a country. Is that connected with leadership? It's connected. But before those leaders became, we didn't have it too. It's the old broken values that we have. Nigeria is a country of wealth without prosperity. With, we have a lot of wealth. We always say Nigeria is a wealthy country. Nigeria is rich. We have wealth. We are rich. We are one of the most endowed nations in the world. But the people are the poorest in the world. No prosperity. Nigeria is a country where we have cities. We call them cities without development. When I came back from Europe for the first time to Lagos, ah, and then, you know, I never, I was thinking Lagos was the height of civilization when I was in my village until I traveled to Europe. When I came back after three years to Lagos, I thought I was in a big mess, in a big village and a big dump site. We call them cities, but there is no development in them. That's why I personally propose that all cities in Nigeria should be rebuilt. And I have a program on how to do that. Nigeria is a country where we have villages, but without even elementary stuff, without elementary things, even like roads. And we say we have them. 
It's a, part, it's a coalition of value systems. Nigeria is a country of religion without piety. We have religion, but no lifestyle that depicts that we are religious. You know, we are the most religious country in the world. But no piety, no righteousness, no uprightness. Lifestyle of people don't depict the fact that they are religious. Only religion. Nigeria is a country of leaders without vision. We have leaders. Everybody is a leader. But no vision, no direction, we're going nowhere. Nigeria is a country of oppressed without worries. <laughs> That's why Showware is so frustrated that people who are supporting it are saying, wow, we are, Showware is going to kill himself, he's going to prison, he's suffering, and people he's suffering for, they don't even care. Some of them don't even care about it. The youth, they don't care. Oppressed, but no worries. They just keep on voting for the same people who are oppressing them. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome is called. Nigeria is a country of courts without justice. We have courts all over the place, but can you get justice in that country? Only on, in few cases. Nigeria is a country of criminals without fears of retribution. The people, the, the most criminals that we have are in the government houses, are in the uh, political post and uh, appointed officials. But they don't fear. They have impunity and they're doing anything they want. Is that a problem only of Aousas or Weebos or your Southwest people or South South people? No, it's a problem of all of us. It's a value system problem. Is it a problem of structure, restructure in Nigeria? No, it's a problem of reconstructing Nigeria. All these issues I'm talking about is not connected with restructuring. It's about reconstructing our mind, reconstructing our value system. It's a reconstruction problem, not a restructure problem. Nigeria is a country where they have history. We have history as a nation, but without history subject in curricula. No curricula, no history subject in schools. Thank God Buhari is trying to change that right now. But that is the paradox of Nigeria for you. Nigeria is a country of giants without glory. People have giants. If we say we have giants, we say we are even as a country, we are giant of Africa. But where is our glory? It is that glory now belongs to a, a, a country that is not a giant of Africa. Rwanda. He's, they are collecting all the glory right now. Nigeria. It's a country of heroes without honor. We have all kind of people who are heroes. I mean, if you go to any ceremony or any event in Nigeria, they, they will spend the next 30 minutes of one hour just recognizing different kind of dignitaries, stakeholders. But they don't have honor because the country is in a mess. Where is their honor? Nigeria is a country with schools without learning. We have schools. But we cannot even pass YEC. We are not even passing school certificate exams. 40% pass rates, 60% fail. So why do you go to school? Why is the school? Or even the ones who pass, that like I said, people who graduate and even finish university, no skills, nothing to show for it. Nigeria is a country of artists without values. They're just, you know, you know the artists that we have, you know, the Hollywood entertainment. No values, just to make money, to make fame, make themselves important, that's all. Nigeria is a country of intellectuals without thoughts. You know, because all the things I'm doing right now, I'm not the one supposed to be doing it. We have intellectuals in universities. We have lecturers, we have professors, we have doctor, doctor, doctors, we have PhD holders. They are supposed to be bringing out new thoughts. They are supposed to be bringing out philosophical thoughts about the development of our country. No way. They're just working. They're just going to work to get salary. So it's not a problem of restructure or it's not a problem of leadership. It's a problem of values. Nigeria is a country with streets that has no identity. No values and leadership too. But those leaders, they came there with the wrong values and they cannot fix the right thing, they cannot do the right thing. Nigeria is a country with, of appointees without merit. You, merit. you don't need merit, it's who you know. It is about man, no man, long, long leg, or guy at the top. Nigeria is a country of hunger 
without famine. We have so much abundance of food being produced, but they are all wasted. Where people are hungry, but there is no famine declared. But we are yet hungry. We are still hungry. Nigeria is a country of old people without wisdom. If you listen to too, too much old people in Nigeria, you become you will be, you will be totally lost. Because they will tell you, don't question anybody, don't ask questions. And uh, they say you that uh, you know without tight, without paying tight, you go to I mean you go to hell. If you don't pay tight, you go to hell. And you, they will tell you, you cannot question that because uh, if you question, you are question an elder. Don't question an elder because they are old. So just because they are old, that's it. Well, that's Nigeria for you. Nigeria is a country of growth without change because they always tell us the gdp has grown by two percent it has grown by one percent oh we are the number one this and number one this but the lifestyle of people is not changing the quality of life of people is not changing it's a country of growth without change nigeria is a country where you have they say they have democracy without the participation of citizens, because they just buy it. They just bring bread, uh, bread and butter and rice and things, distribute. They say, we have democracy, but citizens don't even know about it, because they, the people who need to get there, get there. Nigeria is a country where we say we are together, but without unity, or we rather, we say we are uni un united, but we are not together. Or we are together, but we know unity. <laughs> so, so it's all about, about question of values. Nigeria is a country where you have families without love. Because right recently I read in the newspaper that in Nigeria, that uh, every third child or every third child is, is not the father that gave birth to, to, to the child. That uh, in every family, every, every third or fourth child is not f from the father. Or is, you know, it's... If you have four children in the house, it's most likely two or three of them will belong to somebody else. Even with the children and parents and everything, it is, it is more oppression in family than love. We have families, but no love. We have heroes in Nigeria, but no sacrifice. What did they sacrifice that made them to be heroes? Nigeria is a country of policies. We, they, we have National Assembly. We even have two chambers that are doing politics, one policy and the other policy and the other. But no implementation. That's why the country is not changing. We pass budget every year, but no accountability. Sometimes they even need to return the money and they, they have only spent 40% or 30%. So why did you need the budget in the first place? <laughs> Don't need to use it for. It's a country where we have crimes without culprit. Oh, a crime has been committed. Who committed it? Ah, we don't know. <laughs> Nigeria is a country of saints where we have the bishops, or we have more bishops than anywhere else. We have more saints and more geos than the whole of the world. But no morals. <laughs> Nigeria is a country where we say we are humble, but we are not broken. A country of humility without brokenness. Nigeria is a country where they declare that they have integrity without character. We talk about integrity, oh, but no character, no, but nothing to prove, no show for it. We talk about appointments. In Nigeria, we have appointments. Everybody has been appointed to this place and that place. But what are their performance? What have they done? No performance. Nobody is even waiting for the performances. Nigeria is a country of wars without enemies. Who are we fighting? We are, we are having war that has been going on for so long and we cannot win it. Wars without victory, without enemy. We have billionaires that cannot account for their business. Billionaires without business. How can you become a billionaire without even having a business? Because you're stole. But they're stealing it. It's a value system issue. It's not a restructure issue. It's a value system issue. It's there in the north. It's there in the south. It's there in the south. South. It's there in the southwest. Southeast. It is a value system issue. Nigeria is a country where you have youth without dreams. You know that's why someone like Shoura will be fighting for their dreams, and they don't even care. They don't even care for their own dreams themselves. In Nigeria is a country of elders without insight. You know the so-called elders they, they will put you in more darkness than you could ever imagine. Nigeria is a country of titles without fruits, trees. You know, we have titles, everybody has titles. But what are the proofs and the proof fruits of that title? No fruits. You have trees everywhere, but no gardens. We have not taken our time to turn our, our bush and our 
forests into gardens. We have trees, we not cultivating them to become gardens. We have engineers without electricity. We have builders without construction. Because, you know, what they call it, Julius Baga has to do most of our constructions. And we are graduating builders every day. We have mansions without sewage. You will see that we have mansions, but there is no flowing water in the whole country. They have to go and put something in the, in, you know, they have to be bringing water, tankers have to be coming to bring water. And these are mansions. Why do we need the mansions if they were with no sewage in them? You have Rolls Royce without roads, so why do you need the Rolls Royce? That is the paradox we call Nigeria, and it's about value system. We need to go back to the foundation of our nation, come, back, come out with a list of the values that we have, that up, upon which our, nations, our nation was built. And we need to now sit down and inculcate all those values. We need to develop a program, a holistic program that will cover schools, media, entertainment, families, and uh, pulpits, churches, um, in, 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 uh, mosques, and a holistic program that will be educating everybody in Nigeria from primary, from kindergarten school, from nursery school to university, from um, government uni um, uh, um, parastatus to the ministries. Every Everybody must go through some indoctrinization no, in values. We must, be, we, we must be inculcated in the dignity and values that make nations great. Until we do that, we will still be wandering the wilderness for how many more years to come? Maybe forever. To avoid that, let's all begin to talk and cry, not about destroying the country, not about restructuring the country, not about everybody going their own way, but about changing ourselves through value systems. For the love of God, church and nation, peace.